Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another daily dose of Rivals of Ixalan spoilers. So, you never know when spoilers are going to pop up these days. Was not really expecting Rivals spoilers today, but I'm not going to complain, because we have some interesting stuff to talk about. So the cards we got today are the cards from the new Planeswalker deck, and that means new Planeswalkers, including a brand new Planeswalker walker character that we've never seen before so i'm actually kind of excited about this more excited than normal for planeswalker deck guards so let's jump right into it starting off with the first of the planeswalkers from the planeswalker deck angrath minotaur pirate minotaur pirate what a sweet combination of creature types of course minotaur pirate doesn't really matter on a planeswalker because they don't have creature types but it is still a super sweet card so for six mana you get five loyalty Legendary Planeswalker Angrath plus two deals a damage to target opponent and each creature that player controls. Negative three reanimates a pirate. Negative 11, you blow up all creatures target opponent controls and Angrath Minotaur Pirate deals damage to that player equal to their total power. So that can basically just kill people in a lot of situations. Having enough power on the battlefield for it to be lethal, not really that much of a long shot. Takes three pluses to get there. So I think for me, the big payoff for Angrath is the plus two is actually sneakily good. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be standard playable or anything like that, but more so than most Planeswalker decks, Planeswalkers, I feel like Angrath actually has a shot. The plus one actually deals with quite a few things. I mean, it kills Bombat Courier, kills Earthshaker Kenra, kills any number of Whirler Virtuoso tokens. And right now, it's not like Angrath is going to shut down Robin Oprat or shut down Energy. I don't think the format's really in a place where one damage to everything is going to be enough, especially on a six mana card. But if we ever end up living in a world where the number one deck is a token deck, like Anointed Possession, in hidden stockpile, those decks that we've seen pretty close to the top of the format at various times, suddenly Angrath is absurd, just a repeatable way to sweep the entire board of tokens again and again and again. It just like locks down the entire token deck, maybe a Lingering souls S card is printed or some other good token cards are printed, and if we are in a format where a lot of X1 creatures are floating around and really important to big decks, Angrath seems like a legitimate, at least sideboard option. And even more so, if you happen to be in a pirate deck, because reanimating stuff like Hostage Taker, reanimating Rowdy Crew, seems really sweet. That's a lot of value. I mean, six mana, get back a Hostage Taker, steal your opponent's thing, cast your opponent's thing. That seems like a pretty game-swinging line. And remember, while pirates right now might be a little bit below the curve, we have a whole other set of pirates coming, and maybe some more Minotaur pirates. That would be sweet. But we have more pirates coming in Rivals of Ixalan, so hopefully we get some even better reanimation targets. And then, like most Planeswalkers, if you ever get to the point where you are ultimating Angrath, pretty much just going to win the game, killing all your opponent's creatures and maybe just doming them for lethal. So while I don't want to make it sound like this is the new standard staple or anything like that, as far as Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers go, I think that Angrath Minotaur Pirate is pretty close to the top of the heap as far as how pushed and how good the card is. I could actually see arguments in the right format for Angrath at least being a sideboard card to deal with tokens and go-wide strategies if the format develops that way. And it could be a sweet addition to a pirate deck. If there's a more of a top-end big pirate deck rather than an aggro deck, the reanimating pirate negative is really strong. So I actually really like this card. We'll have to wait and see. Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers don't have a long history of being good in Standard, but I think Angrath has some slight shot of being an actual card, at least a sideboard card, in Rivals of Ixalan Standard. As far as the rest of the cards, from the Angrath Planeswalker deck, we got Angrath's Fury, 5 mana sorcery, blows up a creature, 3 damage to a player, so kind of like a expensive, slightly strange Searing Blaze type effect, or an unlicensed disintegration that costs a couple of extra mana but doesn't have the artifact clause. Upside is, you get to tutor for your Angrath as well, from your library or from your graveyard. So you're getting back your Angrath, even if it had died. So, I don't know. I, we've never seen the tutors actually be good enough, although this seems like one of the more powerful ones 
ones, five mana, kill something, three damage, tutor up a planeswalker, or draw a card, I guess it would be, you're drawing an Angrath, doesn't seem that far below the curve for maybe being a one of in a control deck. So I think if somehow Angrath was actually good, I could imagine Angrath X actually playing like one copy of Angrath's Fury because it's not that far away from being a real card. As far as the rest of the cards, Cinder Baron's not even going to talk about it. They're in every planeswalker deck they're constantly in standard the enter the battlefield tapped uncommon dual lands swab goblin not especially powerful but it is sweet because it's a grizzly bear that's also a goblin and a pirate and it's in red so it's kind of a unique card because you don't see too many or at least we haven't over the history of magic it's changing you don't see too many red grizzly bears let alone pirate goblin grizzly bears so i like the card it's obviously not a powerful card more of a draft filler card but if you're building a fun casual pirate deck you could do worse than playing a swab goblin in the two drop slot plus it's fun to say on the other side of the spectrum we have Veraska scheming gorgon coming in in the other planeswalker deck and i have to say i'm not as excited about Veraska as i am for angreth this planeswalker just doesn't do that much it seems much much worse than angreth to me so six mana five loyalty just like angreth legendary planeswalker Raska plus two pumps all your creatures plus one plus zero until end of turn meh negative three is not bad you get to destroy a creature the downside is you can only do it once it has a little obnixilis feel to it and then negative 10 which just like angreth takes three pluses until end of turn creatures you control gain death touch and whenever this creature deals damage to opponent that player loses the game so basically your opponent has to chump block and all their creatures will die because they have to block all your stuff or you lose the game but you can see that Veraska requires a lot of creatures other than the negative three which kill a creature never bad that's never a bad ability on a six mana planeswalker with five loyalty you can only use it once it's not insane but it's nothing you'll ever complain about having access to but both of the other abilities really want you to have a lot of creatures going on if there's any chance of Verasco working in standard it would probably be like a hidden stockpile deck but then she's directly competing with real Verasco, which is a really strong card anyway and blows up stuff and just seems better and just about every way actually impacts the board by making menacing pirate tokens so i don't know it feels like veraska scheming gorgon definitely ranks behind veraska relic seeker in terms of standard and if veraska scheming gorgon was gonna fit in any decks it would be the same decks that veraska relic seeker was already fitting in so it's hard to imagine that Veraska will see any play in standard just because she's kind of outclassed by herself in a weird way. If you just compare ability to ability, plus two, Pirate is better than pumping your team most of the time. Negative three, Veraska Relic Seekers is just like a less restrictive negative three, plus it gives you a token to go with it, a treasure token, plus you can use it twice because of six loyalty, plus Veraska Relic Seeker reaches ultimate in two pluses rather than three pluses. So just ability by ability, Ability, Veraska Relic Seeker is better than Veraska Scheming Gorgon as far as standard is concerned, and that's fine. These are Planeswalker deck Planeswalker, so they shouldn't be as good. Also, Veraska the Unseen, the other Veraska, I'm pretty sure that it's safe to just say Veraska Scheming Gorgon is the bad Veraska, but it's a Planeswalker deck Planeswalker. The art is awesome, and it's really fun. As far as the rest of the cards in the Veraska deck, we have some sweet stuff. Veraska Scorn meh kind of a mad tutor if you think about angra's tutor it kills a creature and hits an opponent for three damage and lets you tutor up angrith Veraska scorn one less mana but it doesn't kill a creature it just makes your opponent lose four life only one more life than the damage you get from angra's tutor and you get to surge up Veraska. so not only is planeswalker Veraska worse the tutor for Veraska is also worse the one Veraska card i really do like though is Veraska's conquistador this card actually seems pretty good if you're playing a Veraska deck and remember it's worded Veraska Planeswalker it doesn't say Veraska Scheming Gorgon so if you're playing a Veraska Relic Seeker deck having a two drop that drains for two whenever it attacks or blocks actually seems like a fairly on curve potentially playable card of course it requires enough Veraskas to make it good but a two one for two with that ability seems pretty good otherwise Vampire Champion 
It's a hilled giant with death touch. It's a vampire. It's a soldier. It's fine filler card. And a fine new addition. Not anything to really get excited about. Not really standard playable in any sense. So overall, really excited for Angrath. I really think it's one of the best Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers that's ever been printed. Probably not standard playable, but I think it's got a shot. If the meta just happens to go in exactly the right way. Plus, it's just a really sweet card. Minotaur Pirate Planeswalker. Walker is one of the coolest character ideas I can think of. As for Veraska, meh, it's fine. The art is good. It's a Planeswalker deck Planeswalker. It'll be fun in casual kitchen table games, but doesn't really match up to big sister Veraska Relic Seeker as far as seeing play in standard. So anyway, those are our daily Rivals of Ixalan spoilers for today. The Planeswalker deck cards. Let me know what you think. Is there any chance that Angrath is really good enough for standard? How pushed do you expect the real Angrath to be if the Planeswalker deck one is already on the fringe or close to being good enough for standard how good will that one be because it's got to be better than this one what about Veraska? am I underrating it are there any potential uses can you envision any deck where you would rather have Veraska scheming organ than Veraska relic seeker what about the rest of the cards the tutors the deck specific cards let me know in the comments thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.